This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 416, recorded on September 12th, 2019. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way in your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios. And Mike, I swear to God, we have one week of fall left. I keep saying this every single week. I'm, I was looking at the long term, uh, hot through next week, but then I think fall weather's coming. What do you think? You mean one week of summer left, <laughs> okay, right? That's what yeah. yeah, 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 before yes, we get to fall. Yeah, yes, I, yeah, I agree. And it's we've had that humidity too. So even though it hasn't been too crazy hot, that humidity sticks around. It just makes it feel muggy. Yeah, tonight it's great. We should be we pulling an Edward Weininger in in podcasting from our deck. Uh, Ryan, do you have a deck that you could uh, move out to if we needed to go outside? And you're not. Yeah, weather's yeah. got to be pretty good for you tonight too, right? You're uh, you're in the same kind of area we are. Yeah, you know, a few hours away. But uh, we had a rainy day today, which was really nice. I don't even think it it broke maybe 81 or 82. I was inside all day, so I didn't get yeah. to experience it. But yep. Just kind of rainy, overcast. And you're down in Wichita, right? So Correct. just almost directly south of us yep. uh, here. A little south uh, west, Southwest, yep. I think, or so. Um, a little flatter. We're a little bit. Nebraska is a little more like this. And Kansas, you can watch oh, your dog, dog run yep. away for two weeks. As flat as you can go, yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty flat. Well, Ryan, welcome. Uh, before we I go on the rest, welcome. We're glad you're here with us tonight. Glad to be here. I'll remind everyone, of course, you can get show notes. And Ryan, all of Ryan's contact information is available in the show notes tonight. So you might want to pop out to him. TheAverageGuy.tv slash HGG416 will get you that as well. Don't forget, you can also download our mobile app, HomeGadgetGeeks.com. Just change the theme on that. I realized I changed the theme on the website. Never changed that one. So we got out there after Christian's bang-up job of getting all that stuff uh, changed over. Uh, updated the theme. And that now looks uh, like it belongs there. You can get that home gadgetgeeks.com. Don't forget, we appreciate our Patreon subscribers, supporters. You guys, you know who you are, the average guy.tv slash Patreon, if you want to join us over there. And we appreciate that. Got a letter to read here in a second. We also can take donations through PayPal. I never really pimp that very much, uh, It, but it works. And every once in a while, somebody wants to help support the network and you can ship that through PayPal as well. And any of the email addresses, Jim at the average guy.tv, uh, is, is probably the easiest one to do. We'll get that there as well. And uh, Richard sent that in. We'll, we'll thank him here in just a second for that. But uh, you can get all that information over at TheAverageGuy.tv. Don't forget, join us on Discord, TheAverageGuy.tv slash Discord, on Facebook, TheAverageGuy.tv slash Facebook. And we'll be reading a little bit from that today as well. Ryan Kirshner, I mentioned uh, his name, and we talked just a second ago with him. He is joining us tonight. Uh, and Ryan, let me just do it again. Welcome to the program. Thanks. Glad to be here. Uh, you know, long time. It's kind of like the gym room. Long time listener, first time caller. Uh, that's yeah. kind of the experience right now. No, and Mike so. and I got a chance to actually meet you a couple of weeks yeah. ago. You were in the Omaha area and we kind of got together and had pizza at Pizza West. Great which, pizza. Yeah, if you're in Omaha, uh, that's the best way to go. Mike, I was a little surprised my pizza and your pizza even made it out of the place, just to be honest. Yeah, we went with the model of, hey, get a large, have stuff to take home. And I said, Jim, don't be surprised if I end up eating it all. But we were we were good. We, with, uh, we held ourselves back a little bit, and we did take it home to the wives. Ryan, you came hanging out with the family. How'd that work out? We certainly enjoyed meeting your children, and they were great while we had lunch together. But uh, how'd the rest of the trip go? No, it was good. That was kind of the end of our trip. We had a wedding on Friday, hung out with some family on Saturday, then headed over to uh, you guys over in Omaha Sunday afternoon for some lunch. Ended up driving back west to where we had been because Google was telling me that was the quickest way home. So oh. after lunch, ended up where I started in the morning and then drove back home. Okay. So well, other than that, it was a great trip. Sorry that you had to backtrack on that's that. That's all right. It's not the most, you know, the deal living in the Midwest, not the most scenic route between no. Lincoln and Omaha, but you know, you know I, I guess it's okay. It was great to see you. Uh, if anybody else, if you guys are ever in the Omaha area and you're listening, uh, Mike and I were available for random lunches. Just give us a call. We'll figure, we'll figure out. It was actually perfect timing. I think it was a Sunday. Was it a Sunday? Sunday afternoon? lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday lunch. And, Pizza West was not that crowded, and we got pretty good service, and, and we got it done. Let us know. Send me an email, jim at TheAverageGuy.tv, and we will try to sneak it in on lunch. Uh, before we really uh, dig in uh, with Ryan's stuff, I did get an email from Richard. I had mentioned 
the Patreon supporter. He he is the one. He sent me an email and a little bit of uh, a little bit of a donation, not a little bit, but a, a nice donation from Richard. Thank you. He had sent us an email, and I thought it was interesting because it fits our conversation so well and all the things we we do. And I like to read these emails because it's kind of I love it when you guys send me email, and I get about one a week or so. But so he's uh, working through the letter. For, he said first, and then there was a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not going to read. Second, he says, a few weeks ago, Mike talked about um, smokers and barbecues being raised on a large farm and ranch in the Texas panhandle. We tend to know a few things about smoking meat. Please pass this on to Mike, as both of you should know about Robert and Vicki Meyer's company called R&V Works. Mike, have you ever heard, you ever heard of them? I have not, no. Yeah, you, you should be able to see some of their products at basically, I think, at a Bass Pro shop. And okay. we got one of those over in Council Bluffs. They're best known for their Cajun fryer. Uh, but also make their outstanding outdoor. Co- they also make outstanding outdoor cooking equipment. If you go to CajunFryer.com, including a Cajun, uh, what's called a Cajun Express smoker, check out their smokers as I think it exceeds your requirements at the uh, twelve hundred dollar level, not the six thousand. Did you talk about a six thousand dollar smoker? Did I miss that, or did when did we talk about that? No, I know we talked about. There are those that get up into oh, that price okay. range. No, yeah. no, no, no. But none of the ones that we would use are in that range. Yeah, well, twelve hundred is in that um, is in that Traeger line, right? I yeah, mean, exactly. If you're, yeah, yep. if you're doing it. Um, Ryan, are you in a you in a grill barbecue smoking? You you do any of that? Uh, I'm just a gas grill guy right now. Haven't made the switch over to smoking or anything. Yeah, and we had we got a chimney though for Mother's okay. Day, so I know there's some options there. We may give that a shot uh, with this cooler weather coming in. Yeah, and I can still I can I'm figuring out how to do some pretty good smoking just off my regular grill, mm-hmm. and uh, and so that part uh, that's working pretty well. I did see I was watching Stephen Reichlin, and I was they have a, like this drum smoker. It's like a 55 gallon drum mm-hmm. that's outfitted with all that, and that's supposed to be a really good way to smoke too. Maybe three hundred bucks for that thing new, and um, you know, so uh, maybe an easier way to get in. Uh, Ryan continues. No, I'm sorry. Richard continues. I uh, own a custom fryer that Roberts, the Roberts team built for me, and use a charcoal slash wood smoker slash cooker that was made by Mike Tiernan's company in Amarello, in Amarello uh, called Son of a Brisket. I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> Lastly. Uh, he says, I make my living outside of the technology space, but I've been a nerd before birth. That's my kids tell the story. Over 30 years ago, I was using X10 to control switches and plugs with their with the controller. Today, uh, it's much easier and far more reliable with Insteon Z-Wave, Wi-Fi enabled, and the ISY994 controller in our home and weekend place. There's not a switch or outlet that doesn't have an IP address <laughs> of some type. That is super nerdy. Started my home networking journey years ago with an HP MicroSmart server. Actually, that's the one I decommissioned this week, Mike. I, I, my, well, not HP Smart. I had a, um, uh, the micro server, the, the HP micro server N40L that I've had forever. Ryan, you've heard us probably talk about oh, yeah. that product forever. Um, I just took that one down. He started with that. Um, and today he runs a rack Lenovo dual CPU uh, 2012 server R2 edge router PoE switch cameras two Unify AC HD access ports down and upstairs with cat in most rooms of the house. Bought my first Sonos player in 2005 and have 14 players. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Got some okay. serious home theater action with 14 speakers. I did not read that in advance. That is pretty <laughs> impressive. 14 players today between our two homes. Okay. All running either on yeah. cat or on my Wi-Fi. Oh, and I should not forget Alexa. She get oops, sorry the the lady who we shouldn't mention her name. She gives me voice control over the ISY controller and Sonos with units sprinkled in outside in and outside the house. Simply brilliant. All desk laptop data is stored on the server or on OneDrive, backed up internally to USB drives and Crash Plan Pro. Wow, somebody still. Staying on the crash plan. I thought most of us ditched crash plan when they stopped doing what they were doing. Um, some moved to pro, but but Richard, thanks for doing that. The $120 a year for crash plan for me is a bargain. Rich, thanks for or Richard, thank you for your email. Appreciate that. But good to hear. I love those kinds of out those outfitting stories. Mike, yeah. I know you like that as well. 
kind of just hearing what people are doing. Those are my favorite. I love setup videos on YouTube, you know, desk setups, all that kind of stuff. And just hearing how people configure their home, uh, mainly because like when you're the tech guy, people come to you for questions and usually you kind of get stuck in your own routine of what you do. When you start to hear what other people do, you kind of get, okay, hey, no, you have this setup. I heard of a guy who has 14 Sonos speakers. Maybe that'll work out well for you. You know, it's just, it gives you different ideas of what you could do. <laughs> Maybe that'll work out okay for you. Well, my you. boss is like on the way to that. He's like this huge, because I set his house up and now he's big into Sonos and he wants to Sonos everything. And uh, now we found another person who went that route too. All right. It's doable. Uh, Ryan, I didn't tell you we're going to do this, but since I'm talking about it, yeah. give us a quick rundown of kind of your, your nerdery set up there at the house. Oh man, let's see here. Um, multiple desktop PCs, you know, um, we'll kind of get into the, the hardware reviews and stuff that I do. Yeah. So that's kind of outfitted some of those. Um, let's see here. Ubiquity for wireless, PFSense router, Synology, um, Asus for Store, storage. Thecus, yep, NASs, um, little virtualization in there. Plex. How, much, how much total storage do you think you have? Mm, now we're comparing 60 size. to 70 terabytes. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Now, now, okay. For, for the average person, not necessary, but what are you keeping on all those, on all that? Do you have it just to have it or are you actually using a little bit of stuff? both? Yeah. Okay. So, um, family documents all backed up the Plex environment, uh, storage sits out there. Um, and then I replicate between those devices here and the cloud. So just multiple, um, backup routines, it's about 10% full on the um, Synology, which has 40 terabytes usable. So um, nice. So you got that stacked out. Yeah. I just, you know, well, I four was ten? Like, four ten terabytes? Uh, no, six eights in okay. that, in that unit. Um, and Shuck, Shuck, I just, or yeah, did you buy? I'm a, sh I'm a shucker. Okay. All right? right. I'm always looking for those <laughs> and the tens are getting cheaper and it's outfitted with eights and I just, it's tidying me over. I don't need the tens. So I'm just, I'm just ignoring it when I see that they're on sale. With the Synology, do you have to do the whole pin thing where you put the tape over the pin or remove the pin? I have not I have not yet. Them? Nope. Okay. Yeah, because I think on some of the NASs, you don't really have to. Um, and on some you do, it just depends on the back plane, right. things like that. Yeah, a lot of the current stuff just doesn't require you to do that 3.3 uh, volt yeah. uh, mod, but that it's pretty easy to do anyways. Yeah. Right. Um, limited or unlimited internet where you're at? Uh, so I have a terabyte cap. Um, okay. We're on, on Cox? Cox here, yep. Mm -hmm. So I have the 300 meg plan. Um, I just can't justify the gig right now with it being so limited on the upload. Yeah. 30 megs up. Uh, you know, nah. Uh, I agree. That's I'm fine with 300. AT&T needs to come in. I, the rumor is they're coming to Omaha, um, and especially coming to my area with the synchronous, um, uh, mm -hmm. fiber, uh, gig up, gig down. But yeah, you're right. What you, why would you pay for that? Like really the down, like, do you really need more than 300 down? Things go pretty fast, and usually most of your downloads are going to be limited anyway and won't even go up to the full gig. You know, yeah, I see the down uh, pegged, like when I'm downloading from Steam or something. Okay. But that's, you know, maybe 100 gigs for a really large game, and then I'm done with it, and right. I, I don't even touch the 300 most of the time. Joe says, uh, he says he's still ripping his content and making do with 8 terabytes. 8? How can you live with 8 terabytes? <laughs> 96 is what I'm up to here. No, 97 uh, now. And so, but now most of it's burst mining, right? I've got, yeah. I, I have it most packed. I just did some reconfiguration down here where I took the media smart server or well, it's not really that anymore, but the micro server down, it had four drives in it. Two went back in the Drobo, swapped out some smaller drives, put them off to the side, you know, kind of started. All right. How am I going to set my sinks up now? Where's this going to go? Do I really need it replicating twice? Cause that's what I had it doing. I had my data replicating twice internally here, like on the Drobo and on the, on the HP smart or on the HP server. Yeah. So you really got to start kind of questioning some of that stuff after all. Ryan, do you ever find yourself like, do I really get, do, do, you, do you find those times like when yeah. stuff starts going wrong and you have these cascading problems, like one thing breaks another, breaks another, or you find a process you set up like four years ago that you totally forgot about and you've yeah. never used it. Right. And you're like, do I really need that? Do you find yourself doing that? Yeah, I had I have three NASs running right now. I had a fourth and it was my oldest, and it's probably close to 10 years old. And it was running, it was a RAID 5 with three Western Digital Blues, and they were 500 gigs uh, each on those. So I had about a terabyte of space. And I had gotten everything migrated off of it or at least copied. And it was just, 
extra copies of the data and I finally was just, it doesn't need to be on. Just, yeah. just turn it off. Well, I find that even with, you know, I rec- on Plex, I'm just a record it all kind of guy, right? Mm. I got the antenna on there. Why not let that thing just record as much as I, you know, any show? Because I might want to go back and watch it. Wow. You forget how those series, TV shows add up. Right. I mean, that's a yeah. lot of space every single week. So I finally went through and cleared out a bunch of shows that I'm never going to watch. I just had Plex record because and uh, and it was like terabytes of space that I had on there because I've just been recording for, you know, past what, whenever that feature came out a year or two ago. And uh, most of it wasn't even watched. And I was recording like Husker football games and things, you know, oh, I might want to go back and watch that at some point. No, I've never, I never have. So, but man, you guys are making me get on Amazon now and look at drives. I'm on I'm, I'm the low end here. I've only got 22 terabytes in my Unraid wow. box. Maybe get I those, need some more space. Get those easy stores from Best Buy when they're on sale. And they shuffle. had some really good 10 terabyte yep. uh, deals going they did. on. They did. Yeah. But I, yeah. So I'll need to update my parity drive though. So that's like a, I consider that almost like a waste of buying a drive. That's 150 just to get your parity up. And then, but then you can start adding whatever you want. So yep. we'll see. Well, it's um, funny. You say just two, 22 terabytes, Mike, there would have been a day back in the home server show days that 22 would have been gigantic. Like why, what do you need 22 for? Ryan, most of us have, we know Uyghur gets a new hobby about every two or three weeks, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, any, any hobbies, uh, tech hobbies that are keeping you busy besides the work stuff and, you do anything outside uh, tech wise? Uh, not super tech related. I mean, yeah. I have, you know, some of the smart home automation types of deals, you know, yeah. lighting, thermostat, sprinklers, um, nothing too advanced. Some uh, Amazon and Google devices throughout the house. Um, past that, I, I am kind of a serial hobbyist, though. I didn't, I never dropped into drones, but, you know, trading cards, 80s and 90s toys and memorabilia. Remote control cars. Uh, yeah. 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 All, all behind you. Why don't you, yeah. I'm going to make you, are you oh, okay, show, are you okay yeah, showing yeah. that again? Let me, let me make you full screen and just take your camera over there. Like you did for us before sure. and show you might want to, if you're watching, listen to the audio, you're going to have to come to the video for this part, but, but to take uh, us over there, Ryan, just that. give us a, yeah. Full collection. Look at that. Nice. Yeah. So there's some Ninja Turtles in, and most of my stuff, you know, you'll I'll get some complaints because everything's still uh, packaged and on the card. But uh, 80s and 90s, just just toys, pop just culture. collectibles. Is that that's collectibles for you? Yeah, or for me? And, and my think, kids always complain and ask why I don't open them. Do you think you'll sell them someday, or what's no, the... not right now. Okay, okay. I'm yeah. not in it for the investment. Just, yeah, just, just to have it. Just good to good to keep around. Um, do me a favor, bring your camera down a little yep. bit for me too. Let's get your Absolutely. head a little bit. Yeah, it's funny those things we kind of collect. Mike, you have any memorabilia kind of stuff like that that you collect, or is everything kind of current? You no, sell stuff super fast. I do. Dude. Yeah, I really That's do. I mean, I'm I a I'm a buy and sell, and yeah. even old tech hardware. I'm if I'm not using it, I'm getting rid of it. If it's something I can't see a future use for, uh, I'm gonna get rid of it because it because I am such a serial hobbyist. I need something to fund the next hobby. So yeah. usually, it's sell the stuff from the old hobby. You know, it's like I quit ham radio last week. I sold all that stuff. <laughs> And no, I didn't. I'm joking. Uh, still very into ham radio, but that's what I will do when I get out of it is uh, sell that to get into the next hobby. You you did that well, my friend. Yeah. I was for a yeah. second. I'm like, oh my god, he really did. He really that's, did it. Yeah. Was, no, very much still into ham radio every single uh, day. That's super great. Yeah. Well, different. It's it is interesting the different approaches. You know, Ryan, you're kind of a buy keep. Yep. You know, memorabilia. I don't, and 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 Mike is kind of a keep and sell. I don't do really either. I just got a bunch of junk, like you know, and uh, and I, I'm I'm trying to weed some of that out as well. But uh, we all have our, we kind of all have our things that kind of keep us those hobbies. I've got a boatload of stamps down here that are my dad's. Nobody's buying stamps right now, and I, you know, it's so I'm kind of holding them, thinking. Well, maybe stamps will come back around at some point, and that we can we can unload those. Um, that was his collection. Nobody in the family really wants to do stamps. And again, like right now, there's nothing out there. It's pretty it's pretty quiet. There's a, there's a few hobbyists, but it is one of those things. Maybe I'm hoping we'll we'll come back around. We'll be able to kind of move that stuff. Um, it's like Sia coin, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll come back, right? I mean, oh, I hope so anyway. Oh my God, that's too funny, Ryan. Let's get to know you a little bit. Um, you're uh, certainly you're writing. The reason we kind of have you on uh, is because you're you write for ThinkComputers.org. Tell us a little bit about what that is and 
there's a lot of reviews out there. I mean, I think that's a pretty good site for this audience, right? You guys are writing for a lot of the stuff that you probably hear here. Now, tonight we're going to probably get a little nerdy on some hardware. We wouldn't get typically that nerdy, but we're going to have you on. Because we're having you on, we're going to do that. But uh, tell me a little bit about thinkcomputers.org and, and why you guys do what you do. Sure. So Think Computers, we uh, is it's almost very similar to the, the podcast, right? Um, news, reviews, product updates, right? Your intro kind of gives exactly what we do oh, on the nice. website. Um, so we cover industry news, mostly related to PC enthusiasts, gaming hardware, that aspect of things, building your own computers, not so much off the shelf, um, but components, um, reviews, hardware, um, motherboards, video cards, cases. I focus mostly on peripherals and gaming devices. So I take a look at a lot of cases, um, headsets, microphones, keyboards, mice. Um, and then Bob, the site owner, he does most of our motherboard, CPU, um, graphics card, memory kits, storage. I do a little bit of network storage review as well. Um, and then Derek does a lot of our cooling, water cooling, uh, air cooling, liquid cooling types of stuff. So. Um, Usually two to three hardware reviews go out a week. Um, Bob takes care of most of those. Um, it's not my full-time job or anything. I do it for fun um, to keep up to date on hardware. So I'm a little slower on releasing content. Um, but uh, yeah, just really kind of a hobby. We've got, you know, we put out YouTube videos, things like BIOS reviews. So Bob will get a new uh, motherboard in. He'll do his written review, maybe a video about it, and then go through the BIOS page by page, setting by setting, just showing it off. And those are actually really popular um, content. Uh, and, you know, lots of social media interaction, things like that. So just a overall PC tech enthusiast website and organization. Yeah, it's it matches what we do here pretty well. You guys have a podcast as well, Think Computer yep. Podcast. Are you on that? And how's that work? Every now and then, uh, it's usually our site owner, Bob and Derek. They do a weekly um, podcast that goes over kind of the week's news, some of the news stories that we've written about, uh, the reviews that are published that week, next week's reviews. Uh, and I'm on there every now and then. Usually I will record content, content separately and then submit that to Bob uh, and he'll kind of mix that in there. Uh, every now and then I'm on the live though. No, this is not your full time job, right? You you do no. something else. Yeah, so, I work in IT work? in the financial industry. Nice. Uh, yeah, been in that. What, is in that, that coding? Sector, are you, are no, you coding no, okay. absolutely. Not. I couldn't code myself out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> okay. I like to say, like, I can look at some code and maybe figure out what it is. But if I have to write it, no, you're maybe a batch file every now and then. Uh, no, more of customer support, um, desktop support management. Yeah, no, I think it fits uh, It fits this, what we do. I think if you like this show, you'll probably like it. Head out to thinkcomputers.org. Uh, subscribe to the podcast as well. Um, I, I haven't I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm sure it is great. Um, Ryan, you, uh, we want to spend a little time talking about some of the posts you've done. I'll include these in the show notes um, as well. But one of the, and, and man, this is an area that all of a sudden in the last couple of years seems to have gotten pretty crazy. And this is the area of cases. Like, you know, cases have always been cool. And I'm not just saying like all of a sudden in the last three months, you know, we're seeing all these cool cases. But man, there are a lot. And are you finding in the space, you review these quite a bit. Are you finding that the space has kind of exploded with new cases? I mean, is that they're just you're going to you're going to show us one here, but it just sure. seems like recently. No, well, yeah, there's been a big explosion of cases. Would I be correct in that? Yeah, I think so. Um, you still have a lot of your um, players that have been in the game for a long time, your Cooler Masters, your Corsairs. Um, and you're, you're absolutely right. And the reason I, I don't, there seems to be a resurgence of PC um, builders and gamers. Every now and then it kind of feels like the ebb and flow of consoles are a little more popular and then PCs will come back in and then consoles will come back again. Kind of really, to me, it feels like when the new console is released, everybody swings back over to that side of things. Um, but the, the enthusiast industry for cases and components and everything has really always been there. Um, but I think you're seeing a lot more of them now. You're seeing a lot flashier builds now that everything's got RGB and tempered glass and um, controllable lighting, all, all those types of things. You're just kind of, I think, noticing it more. Back when I first started doing reviews and, and builds in the early 2000s, you know, I 
would go, I bought, went out, bought a Dremel and cut a hole in the side of my case and found a piece of plexiglass and, you know, stuck it to the inside of the case. So I had a, a window before windows were really a thing and, um, uh, modifying, um, EL wire for car components you used to run EL wire inside of cars that run off a 12 volt to light up. Well, I modified that to put it in a case and used to have cold cathode tubes where now it's micro LEDs and things like that. But you're, you're absolutely right that the case market, uh, is, is really blowing up with all sorts of cool innovations. Is, is the, are the cases innovating on the insides as much as they are as far as lighting goes? Cause I know, you know, um, uh, Andrew in the chat room says, is it bad that I don't want RGB? Nope. No, no, totally not. Are there other innovations going on inside the cases just besides the lighting? Um, cooling is a big one, being more efficient with it. Um, tempered glass, when it first came out, I think a lot of case designers and vendors weren't necessarily thinking about some of the repercussions of tempered glass. You'd see a lot of glass up front to show off maybe the fans that were behind them. But then there was no separation or very little separation between the fan and the glass. So you're starving the case for air intake. Um, we've kind of gotten past that. Um, internally, yeah, your cable management, making room for components, hiding certain things and knowing that some components look better it with a window than others. So finding ways to highlight those different orientations, uh, things of that nature, but no, you're not, uh, wrong or bad for not wanting RGB, right? Um, it's a personal preference as much or little as lighting, uh, as you want. So, so, but with oh, the cases ahead, that have like exploded, I've always wondered, so I have never, I've built mining rigs. So as far as mm -hmm. like building a computer, I took old cases or, or even a new case, but a really cheap case. When I was looking at cases, I was like, dang, there you can price range from like, you can get a cheap $15, $20 case and you can spend $100 on a case. Yeah. What makes a good case a good case? Just in general, before we start getting into the reviews, what are you looking at? What categories are you kind of rating these things on? So types of materials. A lot of your cheaper cases are going to be a thinner um, steel build, which is fine. Steel cases are great, uh, especially if you're just getting into the hobby and don't want to spend a ton of money. Um, but they're, they're just not as high end. You'll get some flexibility. They don't... Um, uh, dampen noise very much. Uh, things like sharp edges in some cheaper cases, they just don't spend the time to round edges or uh, paint things thoroughly. They don't use primer on the case sometimes. So when you're putting a screw in or taking it out, it'll actually chip the paint off. Um, you know, one of the cases I looked at um, is four millimeter thick aluminum uh, all the way around it, essentially. So that's a, you know, a high end material that's bent and shaped and formed nicely. Um, cause I noticed yeah. like on the cheap one I got, like even like mm -hmm. I was surprised the PCI expansion slots were like, you broke it off instead of like being able to unscrew it, take the blocker out. Yep. Right. They're like, so yeah, I think you're right. And the sharpness, those are the two things I noticed, but I've never had a higher end PC. So I didn't know mm -hmm. what kind of things you know, you're looking at when you get into those cases on, on what you're spending your money on. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You'll find extra, you know, um, thought put into how cables are run to keep things clean and improve airflow. Um, you've got your, you know, you have your power cables and your SATA and your front um, IO headers and things like that that plug into the motherboard. Well, they all have to run somewhere and sure you can leave them jumbled up inside of there. And if you've got a side panel on a case that doesn't have a window, it's really not that big of a deal. It might cut down on some of your airflow and make things harder to work on if you need to. Um, but just including options for making things look clean and tidy um, are a nice addition as well. Ease of use, ease of installation. Yeah, really, really does it's, wonders. It's almost a tool in itself uh, mm -hmm. you know, with some of the the way um, I, I've watched some builds on YouTube, uh, folks going through actually showing the build, putting it together, the things they do. In some of the more expensive cases, it's been interesting to see the care that goes into the build itself. I mean, I'm just kind of used to, you know, you get the motherboard out, it's just start jamming things in it, turn it on, make sure it's working. Okay, set the board in, start putting stuff in. Mm -hmm. And I've watched these guys put, you know, put gloves on and be really careful. Now, with the uh, water cooling, you got to be really, really careful on cleaning up some of those things and making sure, right? I mean, just as far as getting all that stuff done. But um, it, it is really uh, on some of these really nice cases, I've watched a lot of care going into making sure that things don't get scratched or the you don't get stuff on the glass mm -hmm. so that it stays, it continues to look really, really nice. Now, at my house, I let that thing run for two weeks. It's got dust all over it, right? So, you know, you're like, oh, I'm constantly dusting. In your review, and I put the link in the 
in the chat room as well. It'll be available in the show notes. You look at a Silverstone LDO3 mm -hmm. case review. When you're thinking about reviewing a case, you've done this for a long time. Do you, you have a process that you go through when you review these? Um, it's kind of similar for cases. You know, obviously we take a look at the packaging with, with all the glass that is shipping with cases. We want to make sure that it's got adequate cardboard and uh, foam protection around it. Um, just so that it makes it to you safely. The, the worst thing would be to order a case. It shows up, you open it up, and you have a thousand pieces of uh, broken tempered glass inside the box, right? So that's one of the things we like to take a look at. Make sure that it's secured properly, makes it to you um, in, in one piece or uh, not broken up. And then we just kind of take a look at the outside from from each panel of the case you know take a look at the front the sides the top the rear is there ventilation on top or is it just out the back um how do the, how are the fans oriented is there a filter on the bottom for the power supply to take uh, air in okay so you've got the the review pulled up there and we're right now you're showing kind of the exterior of that uh silverstone ldo3 yeah, let me move up to the top yeah. here that's that's kind of a look from the beginning so this is page two before you can mm -hmm. talk about this You've opted to go on the on your reviews of maybe multiple pages for the review instead of one long, you know, kind of review. Any editorial reasons for doing it that way? Um, not that I'm aware of. Maybe maybe page views, possibly. Okay. Yeah. And I do think it breaks it up a little a little bit. You don't get lost uh, between the sections. I do try to try to break it up into kind of an introduction with some uh, specifications and the packaging and accessories that are included. Then we kind of do an exterior overview on the next page, an interior overview on the third page, Got it. installation on fourth, and then some, you know, kind of final thoughts and everything. Yeah. So just, five. just to go back, here's the spec. So this is what I, I really liked is how thorough you go. So specifications on it, Here's what the box is going to look like. That looks a little beat up, actually. And then uh, bringing in uh, the box, page two, we go back to, okay, so there's the case sitting out. Do you have an area at your house that you that you use to shoot photography for these? Uh, it's actually in this room. It's right to, to my right. Um, I have kind of a identical desk set up, um, just a white hard table with some gray background. I have some... Um, lighting boxes and overhead lighting that I nice. use for it. it. It needs some work and I think I need a different background um, for it to just spice things up, but we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right on. So uh, a look at the case, kind of a, a walk around on this. How did you like, uh, you know, a little spoiler alert. How did you like this case uh, as you were, when you got done, by the time you got done, something you uh, liked or were there some issues with it? Overall, I liked it quite a bit when I knew it was, uh, you know, I got the shipping information that, hey, this is going out to you for review. I was really excited because it's kind of a, a unique design. It doesn't look like your standard case. It's got three tempered, tempered glass side panels. In the end, I was pretty happy with it. There were some frustrations that I found, but overall, um, it was a pretty nice uh, design. Right there, you, that middle image there, that's actually the bottom of the case, uh, which shows the intake fan uh, towards the top right. But that rectangular cutout um, on the left is actually to allow for extended length graphics cards to actually extend outside of the the body of the case just a little bit and down below so when it's actually tipped up you wouldn't see it because the front of the case is uh, covering that but it just allows you know for a larger video card to fit inside of a, a micro uh, or a mini itx case which is kind of really a kind of a neat design yeah yeah and and that's this, the, this top is kind of a unique design as well this kind of grill Right. So you're, you have a, a flipped motherboard um, design here where the motherboard's at the back of the case and all of your uh, connectivity is at the top. And so to kind of protect that and hide that, uh, Silverstone designed that pl removable plastic top. It's got a couple tabs there that you can push in and take that whole top off and gain access to your USB and your network and uh, the power connection up there. And um, it's, it's really kind of a neat design. Let's, let's continue to kind of sure. scroll, uh, scroll through the review here. Um, I'm assuming, what are we looking at here? So there it is with the top of the case from the backside with that plastic cover removed. So you have your uh, rectangular hole there for your motherboard IO shield, um, which there's never anything worse than putting together your build and realizing you forgot to put that IO shield on the back. <laughs> it's like the thing of nightmares. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so we, and then we have the single 120 millimeter exhaust fan to kind of bring air from the bottom of the case up and out through the top of that ventilated section. And then you have your two slots for, you know, your video card or whatever component you, you choose to 
fill up those slots with. Yeah. For these reviews, are mm -hmm. you guys purchasing this equipment and reviewing it, or do you have the are the manufacturers sending them to you? Manufacturers typically reach out uh, to our site owner um, and say, "Hey, here's something we're, we're getting ready to release or have released. Are you inter interested in taking you know yeah. taking that on and reviewing that for us? How, how long does it take you from kind of beginning to end to get through a typical review? Um, I take a little longer, just like I said, it's not my um, primary um, uh, job or anything. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, usually I allow for about two weeks. By the time a product comes in, um, you get it kind of unboxed, get all your pictures taken, edit the pictures, look at what you've actually got. Do I need to reshoot anything before I actually start building in it? Mm -hmm. Because if I get all the way through my review and realize I don't have a picture that I thought I did, and now all my components are there and I can't really see that picture that I wanted with it empty, I've got to go tear everything out and take pictures again. Yeah. It takes, takes just a whole bunch of time to, exactly. to, to get that done. You do take a lot of pictures. How many do you think you take that you don't use? Um, for the, the other case review that I released just today, um, I was telling my wife, I took 300 and some pictures of the wow. case and I pared it down to 64. Mm. So it's a little bit of, it, but that's the best part when I'm looking to review, especially of a case or something like this, what I'm trying to do is plan out my build mm -hmm. and seeing it from every single angle really helps out. There's nothing more frustrating, especially like when you watch a YouTube video or something and you're waiting for them to kind of show this one piece and they never do. Right. Exactly. So if you really capture from all angles, because the people who are reading this are probably looking at it from an angle of, I want to build with this. Will my build fit or will it work for what I want to do? So, I mean, I think that's probably really important. I like that you actually go on the the high side of photos rather than the low side. Yeah, and this, you know, you guys kind of mentioned this is probably a good time to, if you're just an audio listener, take a look at the video because we're showing, you know, scrolling through and showing some images. Right now you're taking a look at our installation steps, right? So most of the time I start installing the power supply. I typically always try and use a modular power supply so that the cables aren't there and in the way I can get that mounted in there and then only install the cables that I need when I need them. So um, it looks like you've got, got to set the part, part where we have the motherboard and cooler installed there and then just kind of working through adding some storage. Is that the heat sink? That is, that is a Silverstone heat sink. Um, it's a low, one of their low profile units. Um, and that's low profile. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, I don't remember the exact height, but it is considered a low profile cooler. Yeah. It looks You've like you've got to remember that that's a, a that's a mini ITX motherboard. So, yeah. um, it, it is actually pretty a decently small. Yeah, cooler. yeah. Mike, you were going to say something. No, it actually reminds me of the cooler I have, the Cooler Master Gemini series. It's kind of that same sort of um design i kind of actually i really like that design mm -hmm. that lower profile it fits great in like a server chassis too um for those kind of shorter you're trying to fit it in there that's what i use for my own raid box right. ryan do they also send you and dictate what the hardware that is that's going to go in or is that something you have to have um it really kind of depends in this build for example i didn't have a small form factor power supply so they actually sent that unit as well to use in the build. And so typically I'll use components that I've received, you know, from other companies and we'll just utilize those components every now and then. But I, you know, if there's something I really want, I'll, I'm just going to go purchase it and use it yeah. in my build. Yeah. Nice. And so to a dual Samsung 840s maybe on these? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some older drives there. So, yep. you know, room for a couple two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive there. Um, and, and that, that panel there is removable, so you can mount them to that and then mount the panel inside, um, which is kind of nice. Also, previously you showed the power supply um, connected to it out of the unit, but with the bracket on there. This case requires you to mount a bracket on the back of the power supply and then mount oh, it inside yeah, of the up, case. Up there. There we go. So yeah. bracket first, right? So here's the bracket. Right, and then attach it, and then bring and then it install in. it. Correct. Yeah, bring it in. Are the instructions pretty good? Uh, like, do they provide pretty good documentation on the expectations of how to put these together? Yeah, and you know the case comes assembled. They will give you kind of a step by step of their recommendation on on component installation, and it really depends between um, manufacturers. Some are great. Mm -hmm. Some end up like IKEA instructions. <laughs> Some are non-existent. A lot of folks are now, and I really like this, sending a QR code on kind of a, a, a card and giving you a digital download copy. It just kind of saves on paper yeah. waste and things yeah. like that. Yeah. 
do, do you kind of decide the the how you're going to lay this out kind of in advance from a pit? So in other words, do you storyboard this review before you do it all to make sure you have all the components or do you just kind of do it? You've done these enough that you can yeah. just do it as do it as I kind of do it as I go on this one. I did have to think about it because um, before I received the case, I was thinking about my component layout, what I actually wanted to utilize in this case. And I came to the realization that there's no real good cable management in this case. I mean, you have a three, three open sides. Um, there's no channel for running cables. So I came up with some pretty creative um, ways to route my SATA and my power and everything and actually hid a lot of it behind that heat sink there. So where there was that gap between where the CPU is and the fins of the cooler, there's actually a lot of cabling in there. If I think I have a couple images where it shows everything that I routed in there. It looks like, like you said, this is a very interesting layout for a case, but it seems like they do a pretty decent job of fitting a lot into a very tiny space. Like just the way it's laid out, I've, I've never seen one kind of laid out like this, mm -hmm. but the way that, you know, certain things vertical, certain things straight up, they it seems like you're really, when you close this thing up, there's probably not a lot of space in there left. There's actually a surprising amount right above that uh, 120 millimeter fan. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and and I think you could really do a really neat um, liquid cooling build in here. I haven't taken the the leap yet to do it on this one. I think there's some really cool designs you could come up with in this case. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's it's a pretty tight build. Yeah. Let's uh, here we'll move. We got to the end of the page. So oh. We got. I, I thought we were at the bottom. All right. So then I'm assuming all together. Yes. And the lighting there. So uh, if you scroll up just a little bit, the tempered glass panels are actually tinted quite a bit. So you can barely see into this case. And a lot of times if you're getting a case with tempered glass, it's because you want to show off your components and show off your build. And the best way to do that right now is with some RGB lighting, whether it's fans light strips or whatever. So um, I found a great deal on a Corsair lighting kit and controller. So I threw those into the case and I think it really, you know, improves the look of the case. Corsair so, really seems to be doing, or are they the leader in lighting? At least at this point, it seems like they seem to show up in most of the reviews. Yeah. Corsair right now has some, some pretty good lighting products. Um, for a long time, it was NZXT because they were, some of the first with their nice lighting strips and controllers and, and ability to to do things. But a lot of your motherboards um, come with the controlling software built in or available for them. So it really just kind of depends. Very you're, you're right. Corsair is, is one yeah, of the leaders seems there. Like I, 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 they, I see them showing up uh, quite a bit. Yep. At the end of the review, a 9 out of 10. How does this... With a lot of the, do they all get nine out of ten, or do you find some? No, I mean, what's the low score? There's some, there's some stinkers, right? Um, but it, it honestly takes quite a bit actually to become a stinker because, for the most part, as long as if it's holding your components, it's not shorting things out. You're not, you know, coming up with razor blade edges inside of there. Um, it, it's you know not falling apart. You've you've got a pretty decent product. Uh, a ten, I've never given. I just haven't come across that perfect case. For this one, I think it looks great. The, the couple issues, you know, no integrated cable management or, or, or good options there. So that kind of dinged it. It does come with a premium price. I think it's 159, 160 there, um, which for a case of that size, you might think is a little bit up there, but you are kind of in a niche market where everything's smaller. So they actually charge a premium for that smaller size. One of the, uh, one of my favorite cases, uh, just as, in a, as I think uh, showing you guys, this Cooler Master HAFXB box, I've done a couple of these. And I think, you know, there were some folks in the chat room saying, you know, like, eh, I don't need glass. I don't need any of this. And yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the one I just, I don't know. This style of box is something I've really liked. You can get some, you know, there's some some areas to throw drives in that are pretty easy. You swap in and out. A lot of space, a lot of room. Yep. Handles if you need to take it with you. So this is kind of what I like. Have you seen this case? Have you reviewed it at all? Uh, I have seen it. I have not reviewed it. I, I do believe it's kind of a multi-chamber design, if I'm not mistaken, with, with your storage and power down below. Then you have yeah. your components up top. Yeah, I've, I've reviewed a couple cases with those separate um, containment areas. I really like them. You, you have good thermal control a lot of times, um, just some good cable routing, usually plenty of room 
as well, which is always yeah. an advantage. Well, great ventilation from both the top. You can mount a fan to the top. Air can come in from the sides. Front, you can get the two fans up front. Just a lot of different, uh, kind of a lot of different options. Yep. Mike, you, Mike, do you have a favorite case? No, like I was saying, I haven't really built a PC with what, like a really nice case either. I've, you know, I've had my mining rigs or my servers. Uh, I use a Rosewill, just cheap server chassis for Unraid. Everything else, you know, I'm, I'm on the iMac right now or a, a laptop, so I've never really had that need. I've been wanting to do a really nice build, though, hopefully sometime soon. And, and you know, I'm trying to find a case like that. I like, you know, maybe something just a little bit bigger, but that same kind of style. I really like the style that I kind of like the darker tempered glass, mainly because I okay. know I'm terrible with uh, making the inside look really good. Um, but, you know, maybe if I could make it look nice and have LEDs, maybe some of the little bit lighter glass on it. Who knows? Yeah. Um, Ryan, are you a patient guy with the cabling? I think cabling yeah. takes a lot of patience uh, to get it right, to get it hidden, to get it bundled. You Are you, you more patient or less patient? I'm, uh, I'm very... I'm not very patient at all. I'm pretty patient with it. I do like it to look pretty clean. Um, the nice thing, you know, with all these components, you have your your custom cable guys that will make uh, power cabling and SATA cabling in the colors that you want. So they'll have braided lines for every single power connection for your video card or your, uh, your motherboard power. So you can have them create your uh, color scheme that matches your design, your build, um, and they're easy to route and they're flexible, more more uh, maneuverable than standard uh, cabling. So those are always nice. They they add a little bit of a premium, but you can really look um, like you've got your stuff together and have a, a, a nice, clean, cohesive build with those kits. What? So I'm building a custom kit and I, all I want to do is replace the, the cables that came mm -hmm. with my power supply. What what what's it going to run me to maybe just get custom cable? I'm assuming I send them links and colors and some of those kinds of things. It takes a ton of planning, doesn't it? It does. When you get to those custom lengths, like you can buy a kit um, from any of the manufacturers, really. So Silverstone, for example, I've bought in nylon braided kits for theirs, and they they say, hey, this is compatible with this power supply, and you know you can pick up a. $20 for a certain cable. So you could spend anywhere from 20 for a single power cable to hundreds of dollars, depending on the types of materials you want them to use, how long, if they're doing custom lengths and bends and all, all that kind of stuff. So it's it'll as, as much as you want to spend. Yeah. Kind of, kind of reminds me of the days when guys would, uh, you know, refit or redo hot rods and they would then get custom, you know, you would get everything, all the wires, the cables, the you know, the, the, the tubes coming in, mm -hmm. the mufflers would all be custom, kind of custom built and made to kind of go with all, with it all. And it looks beautiful, but it's super expensive. Right. And you know, Hey, if you want it to look great. And I think there are people, my son, my number two son is one of these cabling gurus and that kid can cable anything. And it looks gorgeous when it's done. Like <laughs> it's neat and orderly. I mean, it's not good enough that the cables, you know, say you're taking five cables, and you're routing them up the side of something and you're zip tying them, you know, as you kind of go. It's not enough that the cables are just together and they're zip tied. It is literally everyone is straight and all they're all in the same spot in the order. There's no twist in them, you know, they're all perfectly straight. The zip ties are all the right length, cut exactly off at the end. They're all spaced like, you know, it, it perfect intervals in there. He's yep. just he just has the patience. Mike. No patience for that uh, when you're doing your stuff? I start out with the best intentions. You know, I, I, even on <laughs> things like under my desk, right? Like when I'm plugging everything in, I start and I route it. And then I just get to the end. I'm like, no one's going to see this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just start plugging everything in. Just does it yeah. work? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, it's kind of like the cable. So in the desk here, right on the other side of the desk for me is a three layer, you know, one of those metal shelf units that's got wood. You, know, you get it at Walmart or whatever. Yeah. They're, it's pretty inexpensive. And it works great for kind of a cabinet to store stuff on. It's open and you can reset the levels however you want them. You know, it's efficient, whatever. And every time I set one of these up, like, okay, I'm going to do some cable management early <laughs> and I'm going to, you know, do all this stuff. And then I change so many things over the course of time. And I look at it now and it's just a mess. <laughs> like, like, oh my God, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I just can't, I can't seem to keep up with it, you know? That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, you're a, you, are you a cable manager? Like, okay. So there's cable management inside your PC. Mm -hmm. 
What about outside? Are you kind of a stickler on everything's got its place and I'm going to route it this way and it's going to stay that way? Yeah. Under desk, you know, I, yeah. I use wired components, so I have a wired keyboard and mouse, so I can't really do anything about those. I have a stream deck up here, so it's wired. I've got the microphone right here. So I, there's some things that I just can't control, but those that I can, I try and at least, you know, hide them, bundle them underneath the desk, keep them out of the way um, as much as I can. Yeah, I think my cables are having children underneath there. <laughs> um, Mike, cable guy, you, uh, the cables you do, neat, orderly, or out of control? It depends on where I'm at. So like behind my desk, I have the same thing. There's just so many back there. And then we're in the basement where no one's here. Um, if it's in a place where people are high traffic areas, yeah, I do. I do I take the time to do a pretty good job. Um, especially, you know, like all my security cameras, they're up through the eaves. There's no wires coming down. I, I wire those up. All the ethernets run really well. It just, so it, it depends. It depends on where we're at. I, I can, I can have the patience if I know people are going to see it. Uh, I start to lose that uh, patience if it's just uh, me down here. I, like I, I think I have the best of intentions too. And then you get mm -hmm. halfway in and you're like, I just want to finish. Yeah. This well, thing. I, I did the same thing as you. My server rack, when I first installed everything was just gorgeous, you know, zip tied all straight down one side, power on one, dad on the other, like you, when you start moving stuff around, you just start moving stuff. And now it's a rat's mm -hmm. nest of cables. I wouldn't even know what I was unplugging. I know. So. And I even, I even went as far as to take some blue tape and, um, start labeling like ends of, um, like ends of things. So I knew like network cables became a problem. Like, okay, where, where does this, you know, by the time it makes it to the, to the, you know, the hub, where'd this thing come from? Right. You know? Right. And, oh, totally. And so, yeah. So I had, I had to kind of label the ends as well. Ryan, you don't just do um, cases. You, you recently reviewed a fanless mini desktop PC. We have seen those, you know, we've had the guys from Kangaroo on, there's been kind of this, you know, we've talked about the mini kind of the mini PC market. Is that still, is that something that's still going on at, at this point? I mean, people are still selling these, these small, form factor PCs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I recently, towards the beginning of September, took a look at that, uh, the Azul Byte 3. Like you said, it's a fanless mini desktop PC. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, not anything that's high powered. Um, it comes, there's a couple customization options that you have from Azul on their website. So um, some Apollo Lake um, processors, you can either get a dual core or a quad core system, just kind of depending on the price you want to spend on that. Um, a couple of memory configurations, anywhere from two gigs to eight gigs. You've got a couple storage options, 32 gigs, 64 gigs. Um, what comes with it is eMMC storage. So it, while it is flash, not the fastest flash, but for what this box does, it was fast enough um, for day-to-day -day use. Um, but it also supports a two and a half inch and M.2 uh, SATA drive as well. Um, yeah, kind of your pretty standard PC, I'm mm -hmm. assuming, in the review. Um, so you take it through, show the box, kind of get it set it up, get get it set up Wi Fi yeah. um, on these. It does. It has Wi Fi. Well. It's got gigabit Ethernet, USB 3. It's got a, a you know, a Type C port on there as well. Um, wireless. Um, let's see here. What was that there? Yeah, dual band, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. There's a good, that. a good look at it right there. Mm -hmm. How big is that? That's not very big then, I'm assuming, the size of... Oh, hold on, he's got it right there. Yeah, Let me... let's see here. Uh, oh, I moved my uh, tape measure. But um, what were the... Was yeah, it just hold it back. 5.6 5. 5. Yeah. wide, uh, 4 inches deep, and an inch and a half thick. Yeah, so how's it feel? Really pretty small. It, it, it's how? actually pretty solid. Um it, it is plastic on most of the exterior. The bottom, though, has a, a metal plate here, um, but it is is pretty solid. There's no flexing to the chassis um, or the outside of the case, so it's it's but good build quality. I was really surprised, especially where, from a company that I honestly had not heard of prior to the review. Where does it come in price wise? Uh, the model that I reviewed is the quad core uh, model with four gigs of RAM, I believe, and thirty two gigs of storage. Um, and it was 239 239 see yep. so this is kind of you're in that area of jim we talked about last week the kangaroo pc where you have that smaller form factor but i think this one for that same price point makes a lot more sense this is going to get all the tasks done that you probably need to do right if you give this to someone who doesn't do much editing they just need to be able to you know 
browse, maybe do a, a hangout or a, a video chat, but it's not gonna it's not gonna choke on what it's doing. Uh, but still, kind of a nice little small form factor. Or it's, even, what do you think about like a media room PC for, for a TV? Definitely, um, it has um, the option for a Visa mount for it, so you can mount it to the back of a TV. It yeah. does support uh, 4K video output as well. Um, and in my testing, I tested uh, content that's stored locally on the device with no issues and streamed from Plex, no issues, looked great. Um, I did see a comment in the chat from Andrew. He says, how many VHS cassettes is that? <laughs> and we talked about like having retro things here. I do have a VHS cassette tape like oh. within reach. So, so size so one. one. So one, one, you know, yeah. the thickness here. A little bit Ooh. thicker than I can't <laughs> believe you found a VHS. Family Vacation, uh, 1991. <laughs> that is Being so great. Digitized. That is so great. Yeah. So one VHS. Yeah. Um, cassette and MVME right in that for storage. Uh, M.2, but just SATA. Just so okay. NVME support. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me let's bring this back up. I am now stuck in a world where I don't know how to get everybody back. There we go. Yeah, I just kept clicking and nothing was uh, nothing was happening there. From your review on this, mm -hmm. uh, runs Windows pretty well? Yeah, and um, came with Windows 10 Pro. Uh, you also have the option for a flavor of Linux. Uh, saves a little money on the cost there. Um, Pre pretty yeah. easy to get apart? We're kind of showing... Uh, Absolutely. Pull, pull the uh, I think it was... Off, right? maybe uh, four screws on the bottom to remove that metal plate there. That's where the external, or I'm sorry, uh, two and a half inch drive mounts. And then it comes bundled with the power and data connection for that drive. Okay. So media, super easy to get into. Kind of a media remote, much like yeah, you'd see it, in a... It comes with a really basic remote um, that kind of gives some basic navigation. It's, it's infrared. So there's a little infrared sensor on the front of the case as well. Um, so you've got some line of sight types of items, uh, but they did send over their link remote, which is uh, further on in the review that I really liked. Yeah, let's, that, that let's, uh, with it. let's skip ahead. That looks a lot like uh, a standard remote you'd get with an NVIDIA Shield or something yep. like that as well. You run some uh, you run some tests on it, not as important. Oh, wait a minute, a Passmark ranking. So 995.2. Yes. Yep. And really, for these benchmarks, we knew that it wasn't going to you know, break the charts, you know, anything crazy, but at least gave, give the numbers um, there. Cinebench R20 is kind of funny, 343 points. But when you compare it to other things that are in the thousands and tens of thousands, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, uh, it, no, I'm trying to remember how long it took to run um, to get that I, score. But I haven't heard of Cinebench before. Is that a paid review platform? Uh, no, you work? can get Cinebench R20. Um, it used to be R15 was the popular one. Um, it's just a, it renders a 3D scene and okay. it runs it off of the, the CPU there. So your multi-core types of things uh, will run it uh, much, much faster there. Or you can configure it to run off of a single um, CPU core if it, you know, boosts to a higher speed and you want to see what the that performance is there. And it will do 4K, but... Mm -hmm. 4K 60 pretty low score if it's going if you're going to try and use this for gaming right this yeah you maybe some flash gaming but you're not going to be playing anything like Fortnite on this yeah so some crystal disc mark uh, uh, um, benchmarks on there um oh okay so here's the here's the remote right mm -hmm. this is the remote yeah that's and, the additional one that they sent and how much how much extra for this remote uh, i believe it's $30 it's not bad. No, it's it's really not. And it's it's multifunction. So right there, that image is kind of the what I consider the top of the remote with some basic navigation. It's got a left and right um, mouse click. It has a microphone built in. So you've got a microphone button. You can bring up uh, an on-screen keyboard. It's got a Windows key. Turn the system on and off. Um, and then if you flip it over, you end up with... Oh, there we go. Oh. Essentially a QWERTY keyboard on the backside. Seen one so of you can... Yeah, it and it also is a gyroscopic mouse, so it kind of acts like a Wiimote, if you will, to kind of aim where you want on the the screen and navigate around, which was actually really handy. Um, I believe it's Bluetooth has its own adapter. It has infrared, and it's also smart enough um, to know when you press the lighting button on the side of the remote which side of the remote is facing up, and only illuminates that side. Wow. For yeah. 30 bucks. 30 bucks. 
I was just going to say for $3, that's surprising. I wish every single remote had a keyboard on the back. Mm -hmm. I think that should be standard because voice just, everyone went voice and, and that's okay, but I would much rather just type it in real quick on a keyboard and voice doesn't work in certain apps. You never know when and where you can use it. You don't want like global voice. You just want to type it in a search bar. So yeah, I, I really, for $30, that's a, that's a deal. Well, that, is that a standard Bluetooth? Uh, or whatever um, remote can that will that work with other other things? Yeah, I believe so. It has a dongle that comes with it, a USB dongle. Um, Here we'll go back. Maybe that was. No, that's okay. I missed. I don't that. remember if I included the specifications or no, not on there. Good. And I could be wrong on Bluetooth, but I was pretty sure that it did. Azul. Yep. I, now I've never heard of them, but are they? I think they're state? they seem to be based out of Florida. Um, and I'm not sure the, the age of the, the company, um, but I was really impressed with things like packaging, you know, everybody's trying to be nice with their packaging, maybe not so much on the remote, but the, the bite three itself came in a nice box with a magnetically held, um, lid, just some of those things where maybe some companies spend more on the packaging than they do on their product. And it shows it didn't mm -hmm. feel like that with this, the remotes all felt solid, um, you know, you, I, I'm sitting here squeezing the thing. It doesn't squeak. It doesn't feel like it's going to break in my hand. The rubber buttons feel nice. Um, same thing with the the mini PC. Oh, I just I just realized I can isolate oh, just the, that is cool. Just the picture. I did not know you could do that. <laughs> Learning more and more about Streamyard as we uh, as we go along here. Earlier in the earlier in the uh, broadcast, I was. Uh, saying I could make myself disappear. And then they were like, hey, we can't hear you. <laughs> we can't hear you when you disappear. Um, let me stop sharing yep. that. We'll go. I'm um, sure that, just show that, uh, the remote one more time. Yeah. Hold that. So right oh. here. And then it has the light button on the side. And then the keyboard here. Windows drivers then. To, yeah. Yep. For, for to, yeah. Not a little bit, you know, um, I've been listening to Richard and, and Josh over at Entertainment 2.0. And apparently, the, in their listening audience, there is still tons in their audience of Windows Media Center, and you know, folks using PCs as their media center, kind of at, at the center of their media center. Yep. Uh, whether that's using Plex or whatever, boy, a remote like that could be. You know, we used Harmony. There was like the Harmony remote and some of those other ones that were pretty expensive. This seems like kind of a nice little in between. It's not your you know, it's not your crappy little, I mean, like the thing that comes with uh, the NVIDIA Shield, yep. pretty Spartan, right? Uh, yep. Pretty sparse. That, not quite all the, not all the functionality, you can't program it, but all the, kind of the right stuff. Mike, how many of those times you've been trying to log in to something? That's the worst. You know, and you're like, oh, it's click, 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 click. That's click, what click, I mean. Click. That's why I wish everyone had a keyboard on the back. I, I love that idea. Yeah. I yeah, had one, I used to have an Xbox remote that had a keyboard and I loved it and it broke. And the new one, I have a nice remote. It's nice and big, at least doesn't get lost in the couch, but no keyboard. I'm just surprised, Ryan. I mean, it, that's, there's somebody still making this and it's this cheap. So yeah, it made uh, me want to actually hook it up to the family room PC now that I'm done with the review. Cause I'm yeah. like, well, I haven't had a PC out there forever, but Can you get this on might as well now. Yeah. Can you yep. this? Uh, a let's see, A Z U L L E, and um, oh, yeah, there you go. And um, at 269 for the these are now these are the PCs. I'm seeing the PCs that are out there. I probably need to put remote we'll do a lot of remotes in there, yeah, 35 29. You can get it. Wow, Dell sells a version of it too. No, that's the Dell projector remote, that's not it. Uh, okay, yeah, sweet. That's super cool. That may be one uh, to take a look at if you're if you're still in that media center space and you don't want to shell out the hundred bucks for some of the more expensive remotes. This kind of might be in between. Yeah, so, that's really neat. Let's do one more uh, sure. before you. I think we're going to get back. Uh, we're going to get back to cases. You got the Inwin nine hundred five. Yeah, this on. is this one's hot off the press. Just published today. So and um and exclusive. So, you ever get sick of just doing cases? Yeah, yeah sometimes exclusive. they take up a lot. Of, yeah. yeah, exclusive live, exclusive here. Um, every now and then, you know, they take up a lot of room. That's one thing. So uh, uh, the boxes for them take up room. 
and you've got the case out and so you got double the space and so every now and then but this one i was definitely not um unexcited i was actually pretty ecstatic to take a look at this uh in win 905 we first saw it at ces 2019 in january um, we did a quick video and preview of it knowing that it was coming out later in the year uh, finally got our hands on it and uh i was lucky enough to take a look at it yeah what what why what what made you so interested in it so you know we kind of talked about what makes a case expensive or you know maybe better than the others this is the case that i mentioned previously that has the four millimeter thick aluminum uh shell exterior so um as you can see there in that image um it is a single piece of four millimeter aluminum that wraps all the way from the rear of the case beneath it up the front over the top and around the back um, it's a kind of a hairline design a pattern uh, texture to it so you have really high-end material there you've got your tempered glass side panels Inwin is known for making very high quality cases and having a lot of uh, innovation with them. Right there, you see the uh, removable air filter up front. A lot of cases typically have intake at the front, um, you know, on the facade there. This case has a solid aluminum panel. So they've designed uh, an intake uh, section below there. I call it, kind of call it a tunnel. Um, so that provides passive intake for the interior of the case and the PSU area. There is the ability to add some fans in the lower section for some active cooling. And then on the second image there, on the right side of the case, you've got some ventilation for the front fans that are inside of the case and they actually work as exhaust. So typically you're taking intake mm -hmm. in from the front. In this design, your intake fans are on the bottom and then you have a single exhaust at the rear and two at the front push the air out and to the side out those um ventilation holes there no oh, it looks beautiful these these holes here yes correct. You're showing? yeah yep. and that's part of the design right i mean it's it's yes it's exhaust but it's kind of a pretty exhaust right yeah yeah you know they're they're artistic they also every year at uh computex release i i don't remember the name the signature series that they do but they have some pretty wild art looking um cases you know one year they did kind of a, a clear pod and um some that move with hydraulics or you know mm -hmm. pistons and things like that and they're thousands of dollars and very limited run uh on those cases but we're showing the back of mm -hmm. the computer i'm assuming this is where components kind of go anything unique there um you all you kind of have a case within a case on the 905. So you have that aluminum exterior uh, right there. You can see the add in slot covers um, to allow access. So they're kind of actually deep into the case, a couple inches, which is uh, a little um, unique because most of the time those are right up against the back of the case in this um, example, though, they, they kind of hide behind there and just add for a more artistic and high end look to the back. How did it do on fingerprints with that aluminum shield that's on it, there? Like it, the Captain America shield that's on there. How did it do with fingerprints? It does uh, pick up some fingerprints, and it had some from the factory. Um, oh. <laughs> so, you, you know so, who built your PC, right? Yeah, yeah. Built your case. We can, I mean. we can lift prints. Um, <laughs> but it, it wiped down pretty, pretty nicely with a microfiber cloth there. Let's then um, moving on yeah know, to the interior yeah. um you've got a spacious interior most of the cases nowadays one thing we haven't talked about is optical drives most cases now are not including optical yeah. drive trays or openings so you have all that extra room uh towards the top right there to work uh inside the case um, so that's that's nice you've got your large motherboard cooler cutout that kind of square rectangular shape towards the top left there uh, that allows you to gain access to the backside of your CPU cooler if you have the motherboard and everything installed. So if you want to change out coolers, you don't have to take everything out. You can usually just swap. Uh, yep, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen. So not I've even seen. a place to put an optical drive if you wanted to? Nope. Nope. Wow, okay. Absolutely not. It's 2019, Mike. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> well, but Ryan, a lot of the listeners of this show I would struggle a little, a little bit yeah. with that. They'd be like, uh, I probably I still I have keep something. an external optical yeah. in the drawer. Yeah, but. 
I guess I'm just thinking of for people who don't have the NAS, right? They have one mm-hmm. computer. I'm thinking of like a kid with a non-techie family. Yeah. And he wants he wants to have his SSD for his OS, and he wants to have like a you know a spinner in there for for data. It just surprised me that that's the trend. It it doesn't surprise me, right? We're going all towards SATA mm-hmm. or towards a uh, solid state. But um, yeah, wow. Okay, I didn't know they were already making that move. It's like removing the headphone jack. Right. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's been there for quite a while. Yeah, there's okay. there are absolutely no openings for optical drive here. Thanks, Apple. Yeah, uh, right. No, it's, a, no, no. It's, it's okay. Fans pretty good in this one. Uh, these I'm assuming these they, come with the case. Yeah. So this case comes with three of their Sirius Loop fans. They have a RGB LED ring around each side of them, which is nice. Um, one kind of unique feature of those fans as well is on that center hub, there's some ventilation to bring some air into the fan um, hub and bearings to give it a little cooling for longer life um, as well. Rubber pads on the corners to reduce vibration from the spinning, things like that, um, that you'll find in higher end um, fans. Yeah, I'm definitely starting to see as we've got looked at these last few cases, just what makes a premium case a premium mm-hmm. case, right? Yep. Because I've played with the twenty, thirty dollar ones, and and the, they don't they don't have these kind of features, right? Yeah, you'll you'll find multiple drive mounting options there. Um, so now I'm just kind of going through component installation. Plenty yep. of room for a, a module again. A modular power supply is my go to. There you've got the motherboard and cooler installed. Clearance was a little bit of a possibility of an issue. So one thing to keep in mind when building a PC is component size and compatibility. So right there, you can see that on the top image, the um, cooler height uh, scroll up just a little bit there um, where the, the cooler would have been. Um, this one, uh, this one, this spot here, that or? one right there. Yep. Yeah, so you can yeah. see the top of the white, the white top of the cooler is right along the edge of where glass is going to cover. So you've got some clearances there to, to, to watch out for and things like deal that. with. It does, it does not all components fit, right? This is one of those where you got to kind of make sure you're matching your component yeah, size. It's, typically it's, it's built as a mid tower. Um, okay. It's not quite a full tower because you have, you don't have some as many um, expansion yeah. slots, but it is a pretty large mid tower case. I see a lot of this too, or on the back side. So yep. you've got on the back side are the drives that are mounted there. Yeah, so, so your two and a half and three and a half inch drives uh, have mm-hmm. mounting locations on the back side. Just mm-hmm. cleans up the interior. Do you mount? Do you not put a three and a half inch drive, a spinner on here just for aesthetics? Nope. Or or do you prefer? Or, would you prefer to have SSD for everything? Yeah, I, I'm solid state on everything okay. other than my NAS storage. Um, okay. But I wouldn't be opposed to it if if I wasn't uh, fortunate enough to have solid state storage. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I just. A box I pulled apart just had an SSD in it, and actually I have an SSD just sitting at this, oh, at this yeah. point. Yeah. Well, it used okay. to be a rarity. I mean, I remember I my first solid state drive, and now I'm like, oh, I, I got all these extras laying around. Something will come along here that needs it. It's kind of nice uh, tearing of some equipment down of having a few extra parts. I mm-hmm. had kind of pushed when I was going into the crypto space, I pushed everything out to something working because I wanted to get as many things working as possible. And now I'm kind of pulling things back in. It's kind of nice to have a few spare parts, you know, kind of think, well, I got to spare this. I got to spare that. I did have a, I did have a weak moment where I thought maybe I'll build a PF sense router. (laughs) And then about an hour later, I'm like, okay, I'm not going down that path. Like I am good. I don't need another thing to do. So. Well, you do. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, And then of course, uh, so I'm assuming this is the finished build. It is, and I actually went ahead and purchased some additional, uh, three additional in-win Sirius Loop fans to put in the bottom section. So instead of just using the passive air intake, um, I outfitted that with the three fans to pull some extra air in, and they pull it in right from that front tunnel opening, um, that that angle and that flat part there. Um, And it's a pretty wide case, so there's quite a bit of air pulling in. One thing I didn't note um, at the front of the case, there's that little light strip Um, towards the front um, that you can't really see on these images. If you go to that one right there, there's kind of a little, yep, that has addressable RGBs as well. So you can set that to be whatever color you'd like, have it run through a pattern. That image there shows the fans running kind of a a rainbow pattern. It'll mimic that pattern on the front. Or if you have a motherboard where you can customize those things, it works with compatible motherboards as well. Yeah, super cool. Did you find, um, okay, so this really looks best in a darkly, you know, in a dark, darkly, in a dark room, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, lights are on. You don't see these lights as much, do you? Uh, I do. Right now, oh, I have okay. it. It's, it's sitting right next to me. That's what I'm running right now. Yeah. Um, I have it set. The fans are all white, so just a white ring, kind of like that image right there. Um, and all those last couple images are just the fans on with white. And then I did add two light strips as well because, again, the tempered glass side panel is tented, so you're kind of losing those components in the dark with that. Uh, so I just added a little additional lighting in there to spruce things up. You posted this article 11 hours ago. Yeah, today. Done. Nice. Um, gave it a nine out of 10. Not even this case gets a 10 out of 10, Ryan. What's, nope. what's up with that? Uh, so I didn't like the fact that there were no cable management grommets in the motherboard tray. There's openings to allow for cabling to run to the backside and to route your cabling. Um, but a lot of times case manufacturers will include a rubber grommet there to kind of fill in those gaps, right? right? Looks a little cleaner or a panel that goes over some of those that can be removed when you're doing the build, but then you, you know, attach it back and and cover that up. So a little, when, when this is going to be a high end case, it's a $300 case. You're going to typically do a pretty high end build in there as clean as you can get. It is, uh, you know, the preference without that, you've got to do a little extra work to make things Mm -hmm. as clean as possible. And then, you know, it's got the premium price. So, which is 300 bucks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, would you spend 300 bucks on a case? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't uh, think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think, um, do you get like, Ryan, when you think about the PC enthusiast who's going to drop 300 on a case, mm-hmm. what's that persona? Like, wh- who is that? Who Who's doing that these days? What kind of feedback do you get? Um. When when you're building a you know a system that's going to be upwards of two to five thousand dollars depending on components you know you're spending three hundred dollars on a case like this, the working professional you know that has the um, the income to support that type of a build, um, mm-hmm. it, you know you can get a pretty decent case for sixty dollars. I've reviewed some really nice cases from other vendors, sixty dollars, and they will house your components just the same as this case will. And your computer is going to turn on and, and function, and they may come with a couple of case fans as well. Um, it's just kind of the design and the trends and some of the features that you'll find on this that you won't on others. Um, but yeah, it's kind of your um, disposable income type of person that, that yeah. is going to want to. Oh yeah, or your enthusiast, right? Like right. when I say I don't want to spend three hundred, just because you know that's I haven't. I'm not. I'm not a PC builder, yeah. right? But if this is your thing, and you, those guys are going to notice the differences, right? Where you where you spend your money and. In there yeah absolutely well super cool no it looks good i this um not not particularly my bread and butter either i don't do enough work or care enough at times <laughs> to to take advantage of all the features i just wouldn't um those kinds of things aren't super important to me and so mm-hmm. i'm like the more like i showed the one earlier <clears throat> sorry I'm more kind of functional, you know, I, in fact, I kind of want everything hidden because I'm going to kind of mess up the inside most likely. Like I, I, I don't want that out, but you got it in front of you. Is that something you kind of get to hold on to? And will you have that on your desk for a while? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about doing a full um, custom hard tubing liquid cooling build. Mm. Um, and I would definitely put it in this case, but that means I'm probably going to spend a decent chunk of money on just a brand new system. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's, it's going to be around here for a while though. Yeah. That's cool. one project I've always wanted to tackle is water cooling. Yeah, it, I've, I've never done it and it, it just, it, but it, I mean, it's hard, right? And then swapping out components, but it, man, it's just the performance. It looks amazing. I've always wanted to do a water cool. Yeah. You know, you can do your all in one coolers that you just pull out of the box and they're already wired together, tubed up, you know, hundred, 120, $150 from Corsair cooler master or something like that to get your, I say, get your toes wet. You don't want to get them wet. Um, we want the liquid in the system, um, but at least get, you know, see what it's like. And then soft tubing is kind of the recommendation next where you don't have to use uh, heat to bend that, that tubing to get your perfect bends or spend less money on, um, fittings to make bends that you like, um, and everything. But I'm, I'm super excited to do a really nice build in this case. Cool. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan, thanks for. Thanks for saying yes and coming on. And absolutely, that's, that's an hour and twenty minutes. That I know. Uh, I'm sorry. Goes. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I love it though. Don't uh, don't apologize. Um, uh, this is you know we've, we're always this long. 
Yeah. Um, and no matter, you know, it's funny is no matter how hard I try, they're all an hour, 20 minutes. It's just, it always just works out that way. But, um, uh, could, could certainly sense the passion in that and great to have you on. We ought to, um, as you get various projects like this, you ought to mm -hmm. just ping me and say, Hey, sure. we got a few things to talk about. This, uh, makes it easy. We're trying to, I, and maybe it's just lazy podcasting, but I'm trying to get more, uh, regular where, where the guests are bringing some stuff back like this. Uh, pretty nice uh, walkthrough on these pieces. Again, sure. if you're listening to the audio and you're driving, I'm glad we kept you busy. But it, I hope maybe they could maybe they could imagine this in their mind. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of pictures. We hope. We hope. Um, uh, Mike, any final questions? No, I wanted to bring stuff like this too because I love the hardware side. I love seeing you know cases, fans, all that stuff, peripherals. Now, do you cover uh, like keyboards, mice, those sort of things as well? Is that your genre? Yeah. Um... I mean, I have a stack of four mice off to the side in their boxes that are reviewed and just back in storage. Uh, keyboards, mice, headsets. I actually have two uh, microphones that are next up, right? So I have some a microphone from Samson coming up and one from, I don't remember the other company, but it, it looks pretty cool. This uh, microphone and arm and XLR to USB adapter was a review that I recently did. Um, I took a look at, um, yeah. All sorts all right. of components. So. so we'll have to head out to the website and check that out. Absolutely. And see reviews on, on all the other equipment that we didn't get time to talk about tonight. But maybe yeah. next time we can start to cover some of those. Yeah, other hold, hold sure. some of that. And we can, and we can um, maybe we do this in kind of logical units, you know, yeah. where we, we look at some things. Think about that, Ryan. And if you've got some things you want to throw together, uh, we'll get you on the schedule. We'll bring you back in and, and uh, talk about it as well. But thanks for taking the time uh, to do that. And I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem couple things we'll remind folks on the way out. And can you stay around for a little bit of post-show? Sure, Remind? absolutely. That'd be cool. All right, all right. So a couple things to remind folks. One, thanks for all your Patreon, those who support us on Patreon. You can still do that anytime. I have one and $5 plans that are out there. If you want to help us out and do that on Patreon, you can head out to theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. And uh, we appreciate those who do that. Or, or apparently you can still do it on PayPal. If you want to do it that way, you don't want to mess with Patreon. That's fine. Richard, thanks for your gift that way as well. Um, you can just use Jim at the average guy TV and you can do a, a, a uh, donation, I think is what they call that out there. Join us in the discord group. Uh, Mike Bruce just told me uh, via our discord group. I, I want to bring it up because I want to read this correctly. He said, I started HelloFresh in the UK. All right. Boom. Nice. Nice job, Bruce. I uh, said, so Jim got me curious. If any K members are in the Discord group and have some free boxes, I can send them codes. Or they want free boxes, I can send them codes. Bruce is now pimping it like I used to. Good go. job, Bruce. Uh, message me with your email, and we'll get it to him. So if you're in the UK and you want to try that out. We were uh, in the pre-show, we were talking a little bit about, in fact, when Ryan joined us, I said, how's it going? He said, well, I just got through a HelloFresh meal. So I was like, yes, Mike, HelloFresh still working for you? It is. I, I skipped this week. So I'm doing like every other week. Yeah. So we did last week, loved every meal there. Uh, it's still going strong. Yes. Yeah, so we're doing about yeah. every other week. Yeah. Super cool. I should just get them as a sponsor. You know, you really that would, should. I really should. I really Good. should just get them. You can contact us uh, on the show. If you, if you got suggestions, maybe you saw some things you want Ryan to cover from his site. Let us know. Jim at the average guy TV. We'll get him back on to do that as well. At Jay Collison on Twitter. Mike is at Uyghur tech, Ryan, how do they track you down on Twitter? Uh, at Ryan Kirshner, K E R S C H N E R. Super cool. And don't forget that uh, this, uh, the average guy.tv, both media and web hosting, uh, powered by Maple Grove Partners, gets secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. And you know, that's Christian. And so, uh, they have plans that start as little as ten dollars a month to get anything basic. I mean, Christians can just do anything. So, uh, maplegrovepartners.com and don't forget to download the app homegadgetgeeks.com as well is the way to get that done. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern out here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. Um, I think I mentioned this. Mike, you're off next week, right? Is that right? I am, yeah. Uh, so I, st I still need to secure something for next week. Um, but we've got three guests in a row, like Ryan, that we haven't had on before. Although I think Ryan, you're going to become a regular staple here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> pre I'm gonna predict on, that. Ryan. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna predict that. Jay, Ed Sullivan's coming on. Ed, of course, shipped us some cigars that we still need to. Mike, you and I need to consume those cigars at some point. And then Frank from Nextcloud, one of the founders, and maybe his co founder josh joss is coming uh with him in three weeks so three guests over the next four weeks and uh, we'd love to have you come back and listen live 
And uh, we want to thank those who did listen live. Andrew, uh, Joe, Ken, Tony, and Ron. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming out as well. Thanks for coming out tonight. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody.